It's an awesome opportunity to have time to communicate with you the Word of God. And today we want to look at, uh, uh, we are on the Sunday that is referred to as Pentecost Sunday, one of the most important days in the calendar of us as, as Christians. And I want to share with you on the subject, the power for the church. I believe that the Pentecost has brought with what has become the power of the church. But shortly the background, in the Old Testament, Pentecost was known as a, one of the Jewish feast days. The Jewish called it the Feast of Harvest or the Feast of the Weeks. But in the simpler understanding, it is the 50th day after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is when the Pentecost happened. But otherwise, it was a, a usual every year they would gather in Jerusalem to commemorate uh, or celebrate the Pentecost. But this one I'm going to refer to was a unique one in its sense as we're going to see just in a moment's time. Now the importance of Pentecost today for us, the day is characterized by the invasion of the Holy Spirit to the church or to the believers. It is a promise Jesus made in John 14, 26. The Bible says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and he will bring to remembrance all that I said to you. Now this is what I take out of this text. The knowledge about Jesus Christ is not enough. We need a transformational experience that comes with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now for us to ground in the truths of the gospel, this cannot happen by willpower or by any effort as human being that we may try to bring into place. And we need the help of the Holy Spirit to embrace the revelations of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, the text that we read, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit will come and he will teach us. Here is my point. As Christians, we are an ever learning community or a bunch of people because the Holy Spirit's presence in our lives is to continuously teach us. The purpose is to teach us. You cannot be a Christian and think you have exhausted the time of learning. The Holy Spirit also is in our place, in our hearts, in our lives to remind us. And here is the message. We dare not forget what Jesus has taught us. The problem is when we forget, then we are tossed to and fro by uh, what is so called new revelations that we are subjected to in our time. And the problem with these new revelations is that they undermine and to a point that they compromise the Lordship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now the church strength is in the Holy Spirit. Now we're grateful for incredible vision and mission statements that we have as a church. We appreciate the brilliant strategies that we have as churches, but Acts 2.2 teaches us that the Holy Spirit, when they were gathered in that house, I imagine in our churches as well, when we gather in our churches, the Holy Spirit filled the whole house where they were sitting. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Here is my prayer. I pray for the evident occupation of His presence in our churches. I pray for the evident occupation of His presence in our lives so that we could operate and embrace, fully embrace Christ's presence in our meetings or in our everyday life. When He fills the house, that is the Holy Spirit, that is our churches, when He fills our churches, He does His thing best. And the Bible says, everyone received an encounter with Him. The Bible says all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. When it is God filling the house, when it is God filling Himself uh, uh, in the house, it's not by human manipulation. Then it 
benefits everyone who is in the house. And I pray in the season that we are uh, about to experience as a church that we will allow God to fill our churches with His presence so that everyone in the house will have an encounter with Him. And as I close, when He fills the house and He's received by all, Acts 2.41 says, will also be our experience. Those who accepted His message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Here is the miracle. When we allow Him to fill the house by Himself through the Holy Spirit, crowds will be drawn to our churches. Boldness to proclaim the gospel will be our reality. It will be our experience. Exponential growth. The Bible says 3,000 converted were added to the church. If we want an exponential growth in the season that is about to usher in, we need the help of the Holy Spirit for us to grow as a church, for us to grow as a people in our walk of faith. We need a helper. I don't know about you, but I need every help that I can have in this life, especially in the time we're living in. And the Holy Spirit, the Pentecost reminds us that God is ever ready to be present in every church. God is ever present to be present and ready to be present in every life. It is my prayer that Pentecost will be your reality. It is my prayer that this day will just not be an event, but a continuous message for our lives as individuals and as a church, that He wants to fill Himself in our churches. He wants to fill every space of our life if we want to succeed in this life. May God richly bless you, and I love you as you continuously praying to engage this way. God bless you. Love you all.